get a lot of great questions uh, at the RV Repair Club from the various social media sites. And I pulled one of those questions today, which is a pretty common one. I hear it a lot. I see it a lot when I go camping, uh, talking with people. And the question was that we have several outlets that are not working, um, but they were working the last time we went camping. They've checked, they've gone through all the, um, the inside circuit breakers, the uh, fuses, various things like, like that. They would be tied to a circuit breaker in the distribution panel. All those look good. Certain outlets in the, in the RV do work, uh, but this string of light uh, outlets does, seems not to. So the first thing I would do is I would recommend, and we've done this video a few times before, but this is a non-contact voltage tester. And this is something you can pick up very uh, easily at a home improvement store, um, hardware stores, anybody that carries any kind of electrical stuff, pretty inexpensive. It's just gonna give me a little beep when I have electricity so I don't have to actually touch the wires. So I'm gonna find out which outlets are hooked to the ground fault circuit interrupter, the GFCI inside. Now, normally in a, in a motorhome, a travel trailer, all of them will have one GFCI that's inside, usually in the kitchen or the bathroom. And then there's a series of other outlets that are ganged to that or connected in series. So if that one outlet trips, all of them go dead. And it's a little deceiving because you don't see that um, reset button on the, on the other ones. Outside is a typical example here. So the first thing I would do is I'd come out here and I look to see this outlet. And I put that in and we see that there is no voltage there. Now, the first time I actually ran into this is when I worked at Winnebago Industries and we were doing shows and we would come out. Normally the outlet's kind of right out on the side here and we would want to vacuum up before the show and it wouldn't work. And it took quite a few times before somebody said, you know, I bet that's hooked to the inside outlet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside. I'm going to trip the outlet. I'm going to check that outlet and, and make sure and we'll come back out here and we're gonna uh, take a look at this outlet. So now we trip the breaker inside. We're gonna check the outlet one more time. Put this back up in here. And we see that it does have power now. Uh, the one other thing that can happen, and I've seen this uh, happen quite a bit, and, and the reason that trips is a lot of times when you're camping and you go to break camp and you pull the cord out without unplugging the electricity, sometimes they get just a little bit of a surge in there. And it all depends on how sensitive that GFCI is. This one happened to be in the bathroom area, right down on underneath the sink. And you're usually gonna find that the outlets next to a water source are going to be hooked to that. So in the kitchen by the sink there, if you have a second bathroom, that will also have it. A lot of your toy haulers will have it back in the garage area because there's going to be some moisture back there. There's going to be some, you know, wet washing things up. Almost always the one on the outside. This one happens to be underneath here, but again, you could get some rain, moisture. Now, sometimes you have the refrigerator that's hooked to it as well. Now, one more thing to check. Um, if you go in and you try to reset that GFCI, that could go bad. Um, I've had several cases where they've kind of overloaded the circuit you trip that GFCI too many times, you know, putting in a ceramic heater or something that's gonna draw some high amps uh, off that circuit, and you could actually ruin that GFCI. Then you're gonna have to replace it because all those outlets are gonna be dead in that circuit. So understand which outlets are hooked to that circuit, check that GFCI, and make sure you know the amp draw that you're using in your rig.